Good morning. Today is Wednesday, November 8th, 2017. I'm Will Snyder. And I'm Edward Brady. And you're watching Across, Across Campus. This Veterans Day approaching, Luke and Zach journey around Bishop Lynch to find out what the word veteran means to them and how veterans have impacted their life. Over the course of America's history, countless men and women have joined the armed forces to defend our nation. Veterans Day on November 11th pays tribute to their service. Luke Snyder and I talked to BL community to learn the significance of this holiday. On November 11, 1918, an important armistice was imposed during World War I that concluded the fighting between Germany and the Allied forces. Congress later instituted in 1938 a new legal holiday occurring on November 11 under the name Armistice Day as a commemoration of the soldiers who fought in World War I. However, after additional wars involving America, Congress changed the holiday's name in 1954 to Veterans Day to honor all U.S. military servicemen and women. This tradition still continues today. Do you have a loved one that is a veteran or currently in the military? Uh, I have a brother named Marcel, and he's a commander in the Navy. My son, Kerry, graduated here in um, 05, uh, was in the Army, served in Iraq. My grandfather served in World War II, and then my aunt, she uh, served in the Navy as well as she was the nurse for President George H.W. Bush. My son, who is a Bishop Lynch graduate 2016, uh, joined and completed a boot camp and now he is a United States Marine. My dad was a Marine. He fought at the Battle of Chosen Reservoir during the Korean War. It's important that we celebrate Veterans Day to give uh, a reminder to the vets that we appreciate them. I think like our, our troops deserve to be acknowledged because they don't always get acknowledged for, uh, for doing what they do. We have to celebrate the lives and the memory and the legacy of all those men and women who have provided us the blanket of freedom that we all enjoy. Our freedoms that we have in this, the greatest country in the world are not free. There's prices that have to be made and a lot of people are paying those every day and we need to remember those people. I think they play a huge role in keeping us secure and knowing that we have the ability to live our lives uh, without the constant fear like some countries um, are constantly under attack and their citizens are always fearful. I mean, what you take for granted, you wake up, you go to school, you dress nicely, you're in a comfortable environment, uh, that isn't just a given. That doesn't just happen. And it, it happens very much because people are willing to suffer and die for it. I think it's important for all citizens to celebrate Veterans Day because it show, it reminds everybody that we have people in this country that fight for us, to fight to keep our country free, and it helps unify everybody in the support of the soldiers. People from various places in the world come here, and once you're here, it doesn't matter where you've come from, if you can understand yourself as an American and what that means, what you're willing to sacrifice, that's what brings us all together. I'd say the best way to thank veterans for service is uh, like if you see someone in a uniform, you go up to them and actually like say thank you. I know one thing that people do a lot of times if they see a veteran, they'll pick up their tab at a restaurant. Throughout the year to get them involved and have them work with us and, and keep them part of our community. Buy their groceries if you see them at the grocery store. Simply you know, write them a letter or personally just go up to them and say thank you for your service and thank you for all you've done. I think most people that have done things like that, there's no amount of money that can pay them back for what they did. It's just the fact that they really appreciate people that know that they did this to help us have the kind of country we have today. If we don't recognize those things, then slowly but surely we'll have fewer and fewer and fewer people who are willing to do that. And then what will happen? Where will we be? What will we become? So we have to lift those people up. Um, and we have to make sure that everyone understands that we know the sacrifice, we appreciate the sacrifice, and we honor the sacrifice. 
Yes, that's very important. On behalf of the BL community, we would like to say thank you to all the men and women who have served or currently serve in the U.S. military for their bravery and courage. This has been Zach Zapatal and Luke Snyder reporting for Across Campus. We'd like to thank those who are serving or have served our country. But do you know a way that you could serve someone? By donating to the North Texas Food Bank here at Bishop Lynch. The North Texas Food Bank delivers over 70 million meals in 2016 alone. But the need for food is more than ever. So please, deliver cans. Thank you very much. With how many students attending Bishop Lynch, it's rare that we can take time out of our day to look at the individual accomplishments of each student. In this week's edition of Student Spotlight, we will look at Tristan Bilehearts and see what he brings to the table. I'm Tristan Bilehearts and I'm a senior at Beale. Tristan Bilehearts is a senior from the Bishop Lynch class of 2018. He's a very creative and talented student with a very unique hobby, woodworking. Woodworking, two to four months ago, Right at the end of the summer, I was just kind of like, I need to do something. So I just kind of got out here and started messing around with tools until I made something. The first thing I made was a spatula out of this scrap of myrtle that I had, myrtle that I had lying around. The spatula, it's not all that unique, but it's still really pretty and I, I use it all the time. Tristan creates furniture and other objects in his garage, which functions as his personal workshop. So this is where the bulk of all of my handwork is done. I have this mallet that I made the other day that I use for uh, carving, so stuff like that. So I have all my chisels and my gouges right there. This was a tool that belonged to my great-grandfather that he used, and I still use it every day. It's used for smoothing out a surface because it's got a blade that comes out the bottom here and as you rake it across the surface it shaves off just a tiny amount of wood only the high points so you can get a very flat level surface when you're done this is a sharpening stone these have been used for thousands of years to sharpen uh, knife edges I use this on a daily basis to keep all my tools in good condition this is a bandsaw this is for doing curved cuts uh, but it's different than a jigsaw because a jigsaw is a mobile tool and this one's stationary, and you have a lot more power with this. This is a miter saw, but this is probably 110 years old. I don't use it, this belonged to my great-grandfather, and uh, I'm gonna clean it up and maybe sell it, I don't know. This is a table saw. I use it for doing any straight cuts that I need, or actually, this is probably what I do with the bulk of my cuts on for anything, because it's such a versatile tool. You can cut big sheets of plywood, or you can make jigs for it like this so you can have small stuff in here just move it closer and come back and do small cuts. Along with woodworking, Tristan is also a very capable artist in many other mediums, from digital to traditional art. You may have seen some of his pieces around the school. And this is a box I made for the BL auction and it's uh, walnut, maple, and this strip of dark wood here is cherry. This is a cutting board I made for my sister as a wedding present. And uh, it's basically walnut and maple again. I love those two woods, just work with them all the time. This is a, a walnut box, Clara walnut. Different than black walnut, which is what I usually use. Clara walnut uh, grows in California, not really around here. But uh, this is a box that I made for uh, someone who wanted a box to have a, a flower in so they could ask someone something. Special. It is also important to note that Tristan has never taken a woodworking class. He picked up the hobby only a few months ago, and everything he knows about this craft is from hands-on experience. He also mentioned that YouTube and the internet helped him with the things he wasn't able to figure out by himself. Is there anything you've tried to build, but you haven't been able to just because it's very complicated or uh, something like that? Yes. Uh, I've struggled a lot with dimensional furniture until this. This is the first piece of dimensional furniture that I've ever made. And I had a lot of problems doing it. Uh, there's something called a mortise and tenon joint, which is where you cut a piece out of your wood that will slot into a hole that you cut. And once you glue it together, that's not coming apart. And that's called a mortise and tenon joint. 
that's probably the hallmark of anything handmade in the furniture business. It, it is a staple of good quality craftsmanship. They're really hard to do though. They take a lot of time and you can mess up everything really quickly. And I, I spent about four hours working on the mortise and tendon joints there yesterday. And that was very nerve-wracking, but I ended up pulling it together somehow. And now I have a piece of furniture done. It's incredible to see such artistic talent from just a high school student. Tristan plans to major in industrial design when he goes off to college, and we wish him the best of luck. This has been Claire Collum and Tristan Rodden reporting for Across, Across Campus. Campus. I see that Tristan Bauhartz is helping his fellow community members. One of the best ways you at Bishop Lynch can help your community members is by donating to the Bishop Lynch Food Drive. Please bring cans to the atrium. Thank you for watching this week's edition of Across Campus. We'll see you next week where the news is right where you are across campus.